You know, Sherry, I was just doing a little bit of uh, simple, uh, I guess, uh, uh, math here, right? So here's what we have. This mm -hmm. is the state of play so far to date. NVIDIA and Microsoft have stakes in OpenAI. OpenAI has a deal that could uh, see it take a 10% stake, as we were talking about, in AMD. NVIDIA is taking a stake in yeah. Intel, which could in turn become a manuf manufacturing partner for AMD. So this, this, this web of alliances and cross shareholdings, <laughs> and now we've also got government uh, intervention uh, and taking stakes as well. That, that's, that's, it's, it's just getting more complicated by the day. Yeah, so you lost me sort of halfway there. And I think, you know, the big story, big picture story is that there is this sort of massive, infinite money loop that is being engineered in all this. And uh, you know, don't get me wrong, engineer not in a negative way, although I should point out that there are critics out there, that this is not really based on sort, some sort of a new chip innovation that we haven't seen before. It's really the industry sort of trying to um, make this financial structure so that they are locking in with each other. So number one, where does that leave things for TSMCs of a Taiwan? So I think that is a one thing because last week's um, announcement uh, from OpenAI, uh, you know, talking about those uh, chip uh, deals with uh, Samsung and uh, SK Hynix in South Korea, I totally saw that as a major hedge. So again, this is a hedge. And remember, AMD has a very close relationship, very strategic relationship with the South Koreans, Samsung Electronics and SK Hynix. So I think that leaves, you know, one of the focal points of the show today is how TSMC shares actually react to all this. Yeah, at least that market is open, right? We've got a whole bunch of them closed and out of play today. Yeah, well, so, yeah, we'll true. check on that when the Taiwan market uh, gets back up and running. Uh, quick thought, though, Sherry. You know, I was talking about this complicated, it's becoming sort of a spider's web of alliances, investments, cross shareholdings, etc. I just had a thought. I'm wondering whether at what stage or at some stage whether or not antitrust issues are going to rear their ugly head. So I think that's something to, to keep an eye on. And as far as OpenAI itself goes, remember, you know, they've only just recently decided to become a, a for-profit organization. That's one. And two, they're mm -hmm. also working with names like Broadcom to develop their own chips. So, you know, is that, are those two paths going to be, are, are they going to continue? Are they going to get thrown off by what AI is doing now with uh, AMD and also with NVIDIA? Uh, I don't know, but something to watch. Yeah, I feel like everyone leans on NVIDIA uh, to a degree, but they want to also uh, reduce that reliance in a gradual manner because they cannot do it all and they cannot do what NVIDIA does for them now, but I think that is just, there is that major urge for a lot of uh, hyperscalers and open AIs of the world. And I think that is really the story going forward. Can they mm. sort of uh, step away from that uh, very convincing, compelling uh, ecosystem that NVIDIA has built over the years? Yeah, don't forget to open AI is still burning a significant amount of cash, about two and a half billion last uh, numbers I saw.